everyone. Thank you for joining Korea Get Big Spring 2013 second webinar. My name is Sienna Bok and I'm an organizer of today's webinar. I hope you have a great opportunity to get informative tips from this webinar and have answers to what you have wanted to know. The guest presenter of today's webinar is Stephen Harsley, who is currently working at one of Get Big Elementary School in Butchan City. Stephen went to the same process as we are going through right now exactly one year ago. He will share the information specifically about how to make a great self-introduction video and tell you why the introduction video is more important than what you think. There will be question and answer session after the presentation, so please stay with us until the end of the presentation. Then let's start Korea's second webinar for Gapit Spring 2013. Please welcome the presenter of today, Stephen Harrison. All right, thank you, Sienna. Uh, Sienna's right. Actually, about seven months ago, I was still in the United States, and now I'm here. So I'm going to tell you a little bit what I did and why I think the self-introduction video is a lot more important than most people think. Uh, there's two things that changed my journey to com to Korea completely and that was one was a self introduction video and the other was the gift to my principal and vice principal but that's probably a different webinar right there so let's go into why the self introduction video I think is so important first of all it's kind of a resume 2.0 you gotta market yourself you know this is a tool for Corvia to give to schools so they can uh, choose uh, what teacher they want. So pretty much what's going to happen is uh, school's going to express interest that they want a native speaker for their school and then Corvia is going to send your resumes and your video. So the problem is all resumes start to look the same after a while. You know, if you're looking at 20 resumes, how much is it really going to differ from, you know, another resume? Also, you know, when you write a resume, you're trying to use this really formal language and, you know, kind of bump up your stuff and using bigger words. A lot of Korean teachers aren't going to understand everything you write on there. So they're going to pay attention to a couple things like GPA and, you know, maybe they've heard of your school or whatnot. But really, I think this is the resume kind of, of the feature and uh, really important for the GEPIC process. And actually, I got the idea to make kind of a... a you know, really put in time to do this Gepic videos. Uh, before I came to Korea, I went to a job fair with one of my my best friends, and at this job fair, ESPN was there. And of course, you know, ESPN, biggest sports broadcasting you know network in in the United States or in the Americas, and the line was just massive. And when we finally got to the front, we were talking to the head recruiter, and she said, you know, we said, what can we do to, you know put ourselves ahead of all these hundred people behind us. Like, what can we really do on a resume to jump out? And, you know, she said, you know, the stuff you always hear, like, oh, this is your passions and, you know, all this other stuff. But she, she made a little note. She said, you know, but whenever someone sends me a link, like, on a resume, if they post a link, which you never really think about doing, she's like, I always check it out, you know, if it's to a blog or it's to a a personal website or you know even a YouTube channel she always checks it out and so that gave me the idea okay a resume is you know the stuff on paper you know your, your grades school you went to what classes you took but it doesn't really allow you to show your personality and the kind of person you are so that's why I called the resume 2.0 what would you rather stare at for, for you know five or ten minutes something on the left like we've all seen we've all made just quick points about yourself. Would you rather see something, you know, like a live person talking, telling a story, showing off their personality, showing, you know, what their passions and interests are through video? I think uh, most people, if you were a hiring manager, you definitely choose a video. So that's why I think this video is a step beyond the resume 2.0. It's not quite an interview, but it's a step above a resume. And since we can't, you know, walk into Korea, since we're you, since you guys are in a different country, you have to kind of rely on this video to spark their interest, to get them interested so that they can grant you that interview. Trust me, this Gepic is so popular now. By the way, you guys pick, 
chose a really good Gepic is I think the best program to go with. Uh, so, but it is you know it's getting more competitive. More people are hearing about Korea, so you know you need to step up, step up your game. Anyways, it's also an efficient ways for schools to see a person's looks, personality, and speaking style all in one. So it's going into looks. Koreans are very, very looks conscious. You'll notice that when you when you come here immediately, that uh, no one really goes outside in their pajamas or uh, you know kind of shaggy clothes. They all look really nice, and it's a very much of a suit culture. Boys. No, I don't even know what kind of they could work at convenience stores, but the looks they're always walking around in suits and stuff like that. So I'm not saying you know you need to go out and get plastic surgery, rearrange your face and all that stuff, but you should definitely when you do this video, look your best. And facial hair usually has to go. I mean maybe you can grow it when you're here and see see how it goes with your school, but for the video, if you have this, you know, massive lumberjack beard, you know, that's not really favorable. A lot of Koreans don't really, aren't really comfortable with that. So, you know, make sure you look nice, um, wear suits and all that stuff. But yeah, uh, like I said, one of the reasons is they're very looks conscious. So this allows them an avenue to see, you know, who they're going to be teaching next to. A lot of this is, you know, you are a teacher, but, you know, think about your students' parents. They can't speak English. Most of them won't be able to speak English. So the only thing they're going to be able to judge you on when they do an open class or they see you around the school is by looks. So they want someone who looks friendly, who looks professional, and you know, would be a good representation of their school. Uh, Personality-wise, you know, are you a dud or are you a stud? You know, if are you do you have an energy? That's the great thing about a video that a resume can't do is you get to see the energy someone has. Um, Someone might have a great looking resume, you know, the 4.0, all greatest school, but their personality is just not there. They don't have energy and really that's what teaching is about, especially in Korea when you're uh, a native speaker. It's about the energy you have towards your class. So I'm sure, you know, teachers are definitely looking for that. And then also speaking style, you know. They want to see if they can understand your accent. You might be great looking, you might have a great resume, but if they can't understand the word that's coming out of your mouth, you know, they might you know, might have a problem with that. So, like I said, video is the perfect package for this. You get to see looks, personality, and speaking style all in one form. And finally, the ability to bypass flaws on your resume or any pre-existing condition you may have, also known as the Kilpo dilemma. That's something I coined myself. But, so let me tell you a little about myself. Let's go into story time. Uh, I was adopted when I was about three months old to an American family in the United States. And I had no background in Korean, could not speak the language, uh, didn't know anything about it. So when I you know, started getting interested in Korea, I went through Corvia. And there's, when you come to Korea, Gyopo's, Gyopo is like a... Uh, a Korean whose parents went to another country, you know, like a Korean American, Korean Canadian, K Korean Australian, you know, keeps going. Um, in Korea, it's kind of tough to get a job when you're a Kyopo, especially in public school, because they want, you know, they're investing all this money. They want something that is, you know, that looks foreign. To be quite frank, they want that, you know, foreign mystique. It's kind of like you go into, you know, you go to a Japanese restaurant and the cooks and all the staff is you know, Italian. You're kind of like, oh, I want the authentic thing, which, you know, it, it sounds bad, but that's that's the situation over here. So with that, um, they still do hire Kyopos, Kyopos because they can speak, most of them can speak Korean and English. But I'm adopted. I, I look this way, but I can't speak Korean. So literally, I'm on the bottom bottom of the totem pole. And uh, my recruiter through Corvia was Claire, great girl. And she, you know, after we were doing the process, she sent she didn't take me aside, but she sent me an email, and she was kind of like, you know, because of your situation, it's going to be kind of tough to get you a job. So you might have to be flexible, and you might have to work a little bit harder. And I was like. That's fine. You know, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. And she said, "Okay, so send me a video, and you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do." So right then, I thought I was like, "You know what? I'm going to make the best video 
I can possibly make and just blow Claire away so that she has this re-energized, you know, attitude towards me and hopefully schools will see past, you know, my picture because that's all you're going off right now before this video is just a picture and your resume and pictures, if it's like mine, it's probably horrible. So I made a video and I looked, I was doing all this research on YouTube and I'm sure you guys have too and you just see people in front of a webcam and they're like lying down on their side with their hand on their like face doing some weird like sexy kind of pose for when they do it but uh they were horrible you know like they weren't interesting at all and I was like you know I'm gonna make something that varies the shots shows my my life not just me talking to the camera and so we did that and I went from having uh, no interviews no interview requests from schools sent in the video after that I had a handful and I it actually completely turned around the the interview the interviewing experience because before it was completely an employer's market but after this it kind of got changed in my favor the school I'm actually with I'll never forget it when I interviewed with them they immediately just said like please please choose us please choose us please choose our school I was like this is kind of strange you should be the other way they should be asking me like why should we want you but if you make a great quality video and it looks you know like it got has some time put into it you know they're gonna take notice and it's gonna stand out that's the most important thing is making your video stand out from all the other ones they get if you have you know if you have a great quality one with production value they're just even even if your resume is not that good there it's still always gonna stick out in their mind um, so anyways let's go into videos do's and don'ts and then we can go into Q&A because I think that's more important to hear your guys' questions. So I've divided this into two sections. Do these and try not to do these other ones. Um, if, if you have to, it's okay, but try, try not to. Technical for do these is get a real camera. I know you guys have to have at least one friend who's nerdy and into video, maybe, you know, maybe in your family as well. Uh, borrow from a friend if necessary. Try not to use a webcam. Um, I know most of you guys are Apple users, and the photo booth option is, you know, is probably what you guys were thinking, and that that's okay. But if you can get a real camera so you can make it mobile, take it where you go, you know, film film scene outside. You know, just you eating at a restaurant uh, with a friend, it'll vary the shots. You know, uh, use an external mic or position yourself close to the camera's mic. Before I came here, I used to work in. Uh, television and we we're always told you know you can have the crappiest video quality out there but if your mic is good and your audio quality is good you can still tell a story effectively and I think that's true uh, definitely it's a huge turn off I mean you guys have watched older YouTube videos where it's like unbearable now you know you're so used to high quality and you watch something from 2006 uploaded in 2006 you're like this is unbearable it's, you know the school person you know if they're watching videos and one person's quality is just crap they're gonna they're gonna you know go to the next one they're not gonna give you a full chance um, use people to help you uh, I can't think of a better way in a last you know couple months before you come to Korea than to use this as an excuse to get together with some friends and just film a film a movie come on you know we're getting older but it still feels like uh, middle school just going out and filming movies with our friends you know uh, edit the video probably one of the most important uh, if you ignore everything I say about you know varying shots and uh, doing different filming in different rooms and stuff like that at least edit the video so that when you're one-on-one -on -one with your webcam if you have a question like a teaching method versus you know uh, passions or you know past um, have it go into a black screen where it says like teething methodology and then it comes back to you so it's just you know organized into sections that really uh, adds a lot to the video and it makes it not feel like just one giant paragraph you know and finally music if you have low points in your video where you're not speaking you're showing uh, use some music you know make them feel something uh, make them feel sad if you're telling you know a sad story or showing someone you know your dog dying or something like that or if it's like a really exciting 
part, you know, use some uplifting music. Uh, going into the personal the yourself side of this, I guess, dress nice. Like I said, Koreans are very looks conscious. So I'm not saying wear a suit. Uh, that's kind of awkward to sit in a suit in your own house. You suits are for outside. But uh, I would say go for business casual. Wear a nice dress shirt if you're a guy. And for a girl, just wear a nice shirt that, you know, doesn't show too much cleavage, I guess. <laughs> uh, show yourself doing stuff. That's really important rather than just sitting in front of your microphone uh, and your computer. It's show yourself doing something. If you have a passion, if you have a hobby, do it. You know, show them. Don't say, this is me juggling. Just show it. <laughs> just show it in like a montage of shots or something like that, of pictures about your past. Um, also, like I said, vary the shots of yourself. Uh, don't just have one shot going straight on you and leave it there the whole time. Maybe do it in a different room or... Uh, you know, outside when, like I said before, if you're eating with friends, you know, just film it, showing that you're a human being, you're a person, not just someone who, you know, only is an academic scholar that really wants to come to Korea and does nothing but study all the time. And finally, express yourself. Uh, show your energy if you have it, definitely, because that's the thing that's going to shine the most, and that's going to probably make the schools uh, give you a better chance of being picked because a lot of times, you know, when you're trying to entertain young children, such as elementary school students, and you don't speak their language, you just have to be excited about it. So they, uh, they want to see your energy. For technical, for try not to do these, try to avoid using a laptop webcam. Like I said, I know that's not an option for all of you, but try not to. Um, avoid filming in your bedroom. When I was doing research for my video, I looked, and there's this guy that swear to God, he had uh, his room, it was his bedroom, but it looked like a Soviet like prison cell. Like there's no, nothing on his walls, and there's like a single mattress, no box spring even, like on, on the floor, and it's just, even though there was nothing in that room, it was so distracting because there was nothing in that room, and it just made you think like, is this, does this guy even live here? Like is this house, or is he squatting, you know, in like a de <laughs> development somewhere? Um, avoid filming in a place with lots of noise. I know that's kind of given for audio and all that stuff, but uh, that's why actually most people f choose to film in their bedroom. But I mean, just go to when you're, you know, when your family, if you're living at home, if your family's uh, out of the house, you know, you can film in the living room while they're gone, and uh, you know, there won't be any noise there. Um, also, avoid dark places. Anyone that films with like digital stuff, digital cameras l crave light. That's how they look good. Good shots are if there was a lot of light and bad shots are when there was not a lot of light. So make sure to have a better quality, film in a bright place. Uh, bedrooms are usually not bright places. So just keep that in mind. And finally, for try not to do these for the yourself part, uh, do not read from a script. I saw that, I've seen that too, where guys read. <laughs> this guy was, you know, he's trying to look at his webcam and there's a script off to the left, and you can just see his eyes going down. But as they're going down, they start like kind of going towards the middle. So you look cross-eyed the entire time, and it just looked terrible. Uh, so try not to do that. Just have you know key points you're gonna you're gonna speak on. Practice it. Definitely practice it before you film. Great thing also is it's video. So if you don't like it, you can do it again. You know. Um, do not make demands from the school. Do not tell your school what you expect. Just tell them what you expect your about yourself how you're going to perform, you know, what you're going to bring to the table. And finally, don't talk slow, but don't talk fast. Everyone says, you know, when you're speaking, you know, to a, a Korean person or anyone that doesn't speak same language, you should speak slow. And it comes out like, hello, my name is Steven. That sounds kind of you know, condescending, right? So my advice is just put space, a little bit more spaces between the words or between the sentences, actually. So I'm saying, hi, my name is Steven. I'm from, you know, between the senses. Don't don't talk so slow, it's ridiculous, but don't, you know, try not to talk fast. And like I said, if you make the video, you can show it to a friend and ask, you know, hey, am I talking too slow? Am I talking too fast? And they can give you feedback. So that's that. Remember, you don't have to do all these things, but in doing so, you'll make yourself stand out from the slew of other Gepic intro videos and higher your chances of getting a school in an area you want. I was able to be choosy, honestly, because I 
made, you know, I think my videos stood out from the other ones that they were getting. Uh, I had a little bit more ability to choose where, what area I wanted to go to and what school in that particular area I wanted to go to. Uh, just a little fun fact. I chose my school based on the fact that they said, I'm going to get an office towel and a bathroom that has a shower door. That's completely how I chose my, my school. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, um, that's it. So I hope you guys have some good questions. This is you know, a great time to, to ask if you have any questions for me. So with that, I'll hand it back to Sienna. Thank you for the presentation, Stephen. Now we're going to have question and answer time. Today's guest, um, presenter Stephen, and our Korea director and co-founder, Anhot, will do their best in answering your questions. Now, if you have any questions, please use the question box or raise your hands by clicking the hands button that is on the right side of all. And we'll unmute your microphone accordingly. Free to ask me whatever, whatever you want. Uh, hello, I'm sorry, my microphone has a little bit of trouble. So you have a lot of questions and Stephen, make sure Stephen has to go back to class in 20 minutes, right? Stephen? Uh, what time is it? Yeah, in about 20 minutes. In 20 minutes. So, Children screaming. Stephen, okay. Yes. Let, let's do this way. There are a lot of questions right now and I'm going to quietly park and Sienna Bag will answer those questions you put, you uploaded on the question box. Okay? And okay. I will turn on those people's, those people who raise their hands so that you can hear what they're, what they're asking about. Okay? First, Perfect. okay. Uh, Erica, mm -hmm. I will unmute your mic. Can, can you say hi? Hi. Hey, how are you, Erica? Fine, how are you? Good, good. So my question is this. Gotcha. In terms of video editing and stuff, I'm very, very, very limited. Do you yeah. have any programs that you would, um, that you would um, recommend? I have Windows Movie Maker, but I don't know if that's good or there's something yeah, you would Windows recommend Mo people use it Windows friendly. Movie Maker is perfect is is perfect or if you have a Mac iMovie um, it doesn't you know, it, I'm not saying you know like have explosions or stuff like that uh, just just be able to use something that can you know just edit pictures video and some audio together and yeah Windows Movie Maker is perfectly fine for that and uh, iMovie is great um, yeah <laughs> okay thank you no problem All right. Uh, thank you, Erica. I will unmute your mic. And Tony? Hey, Tony? Yeah, hi. Uh, hey, man, can, what's I, up? can I see your video? <laughs> yeah, uh, they, yeah, it sounds I'm fantastic, sure they can... But I actually, I don't have anything to go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, the one of the best things you can do is just go to YouTube and type in uh, Gepic Intro Video or Gepic Interview. And you'll just see uh, you'll see a lot of people's you know, from good ones to bad ones. Uh, but yeah, they can. Mine's private because you know it's. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I didn't want to make you know something so personal like uh, public. But I'm sure they can send you a link to it uh, and whatnot. Alrighty, oh. Stephen. If you are allowed it, then I'm going to send you guys a link if you guys want. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure yeah. you have PayPal so here. Yeah, but I'm sure it's it's it was a like small documentary. <laughs> so yeah, we no, don't we I don't mean, expect that much of the video. What I went kind of overboard and I'll admit that, but uh -huh. the whole thing is just to get you guys to realize this is like a lot bigger. Uh, originally I thought, oh god, this is just another document that Corvia requires me to do and you know, I'll do it really quick, but Really, this is a prime marketing tool they use to get you an interview with a school. So it's, I would say, put more of your energy, more of your time into this this one thing. Spend a couple weeks on it. Spend two weeks, or you know, more than five minutes just recording it because it is really important. And I'm sure all you guys are freaking out right now, like, oh, am I going to get an interview with a school? And this is honestly the tool to get that. So. Alrighty. Okay, uh, there are similar questions on the question box okay. saying that like if they can share the link of your videos. 
So like if you if you say yes, then I'm gonna send only this attendance uh, link. Yeah, that's fine. But just okay. just again, you guys will see. I went kind of overboard with it. And, All right. And there was I, another I, question. There were another questions from Andrew Lerner. What yeah. was the gift you gave to your bosses? <laughs> like I said, man, that's a that's a <laughs> different webinar. Um, I know you guys are flipping out about the 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 gift. Uh, I brought a bottle of wine. I'm from California, so I brought like a twelve dollar bottle of wine and the. My principal thought it was from France, and he kept talking. <laughs> and he uh, and he has loved that. Completely changed his you know perception of me. Uh, I guess I guess I can go into that for you know thirty more seconds. But uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Use something just really quickly when you have a gift. Make sure it's versatile. You know, it, just because I got him wine doesn't mean I think he's a drinker. Because a lot of people use wine as decoration. So, or you know, when they have guests over at their house, they want to show that they have a bottle of wine. So, that was that. Yeah. Yeah, well, before uh, before you're coming to Korea, we're going to definitely have another webinar. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, then, then and in, in that time, we're going to, like, for you to bring small gifts, it doesn't have to be that expensive ones, but, you know, for you to bring small gifts for your bosses or co-workers will be greatly appreciated. Yeah. Korea is the gift. Okay. Okay, Stephen, there are another questions from Greg saying, what software would you recommend for editing? Uh, just the ones uh, I was saying earlier, you know, if you want to, <laughs> the you can use iMovie, iMovie, or if you, you know, have a little experience with video editing, you can do Final Cut Pro. But iMovie, I believe, is free if you have uh, if you have any uh, Mac operating system. And then Windows Movie Maker is free. Uh, if you have Windows Seven, you actually have to download it separately. So just Type into uh, Google, you know, Microsoft Windows Movie Maker 2.0 or something like that. Uh, oh, that's another thing I wanted to touch on is, you know, video editing is actually a great skill to have in general. So, you know, use this as an excuse to get to know uh, a video editing program. It's not, you know, it's not that scary, and you can definitely use it in the future. I've used it a couple times since I've been here because my school requires me to do uh, an English broadcast. So I'm. You know, always making little movies now and then. So great school uh, skill to pick up, and yeah. Alrighty, there's another question from Douglas. How will schools react to seeing multiple videos of you? I wouldn't. Oh, see multiple videos. And do you mean? Does Douglas mean like uh, sending multiple interviews or multiple? I would say I'm, don't. You I'm, I'm not sure about it. Uh, well, I'll take I'll take liberty, Douglas. I yeah, would say, yeah. <laughs> okay. I I would say don't send multiple videos. Try to make one, you know, kick butt video that's five minutes that makes it feel like they're on a roller coaster and you know, has a twist at the end and all that stuff. You know, just pack it all your attention into a good three to five minute video. Don't send multiple ones. All right. There's another uh, question from Alana that okay. she. Don't have any clue about videos and such. I don't know how to edit. I've never used a camera, so how do I make my videos stand out? Well, it's great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you definitely got to use the uh, the examples you see on YouTube. Just look, like I said, type in Gepic introduction video or a Gepo Ge Gepo Gepic Gepic interview, and you'll see you know what other people have done. But also the internet is, you know, we're all, I'm sure all you guys visit Dave's ESL Cafe and Wagoop.org or .com, whatever it is now, uh, all the time. So we're all pretty internet savvy. So anything, that's the great thing about the internet is there's tutorials on YouTube for how to use any program. So if you don't know how to do anything on Windows Movie Maker or, you know, iMovie, just type in what you want to do on YouTube, and you will find a tutorial, a video tutorial of someone doing it. So it's 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 it can be a little bit time consuming, but you know, this is a year, a year long contract. So uh, I would just uh, you know try to make the best video you can. You know. Okay. Uh, can you please raise your hand if you have any more questions? Anyone? <laughs> if 
He's going to have to go back to his class in five minutes, so please be hurry. Yeah, don't be afraid. We could actually use this time if they had anything that's not video specific, I guess. Okay, there's a Christopher asking, is teaching in Korea what you expected? Um, <laughs> such a large question. Uh, no, it's, it's fairly, I mean, what you're going to be doing is fairly similar to what you would do if you were teaching in the United States. I don't have a teaching background. That's what I meant by the, uh, how I said you can bypass any flaw you have on your resume with the video is I had no really teaching experience uh, as far as like a elementary school. So the whole teaching thing was new to me. But after doing it for a while, you can tell that it's pretty similar with how, you know, in the United States or Canada, you know, school, uh, an English class would be conducted. Okay. Uh, if there are no other uh, people who is going to ask questions, okay, Christopher. There is another question, but it seems like those questions is getting more apart from the video itself. So I will, I'm sure Stephen will answer this question in last, and we're going to end up this webinar then. Okay. Uh, he asked, how well behaved are the students in Korea, Stephen? How well behaved? Uh, <laughs> I only work at an elementary school, so to be honest, they're just like American kids. You know, they have a lot of energy, and that's what requires, you know, you can't just, you can't just have a lecture, a university lecture where you're, you have a PowerPoint and you're going through, you know, translations. You have to play games. You have to keep their their interest there. You know, they're, this generation of kids, both back home, is they have like developing forms of ADD. You know, they always want to be focusing on something else. So you have to make your lesson fun. Otherwise, it will turn them off. You know, you can't just have a very you know, deep lecture on the theory of English and all that stuff. You gotta you gotta make it exciting. So if you make it exciting you'll realize they're exactly like us, man. When we were young where we just didn't want to pay attention. Imagine be, imagine being in, you know, third grade and having a, a hardcore English class that, you know, has exams. We can't even imagine that because we don't really start learning languages till we're in middle school at least. But these kids are elementary, so you gotta play to the elementary part, make games, make it interesting, get flashy. Okay, thank you, Stephen, and thank you, Anne, and thank you for joining the webinar today. I hope that this webinar was helpful for you to prepare gap process as well as the self-introduction video. If you have any further questions, please contact your recruiter. Also, the more webinars are coming up, the next webinar will be gap frequently asked questions from fresh graduate candidates held on next Tuesday. If you're a recent graduate from university, this will be a great opportunity for you to get your answers. Also, if you have some questions that you didn't get to have an answer from Stephen today, please don't worry. He will come back with another webinar at the end of this month about the public school teaching job. Okay, um, Stephen says that he wants to say uh, one last thing, so I'll hand it over to Stephen. Yeah, don't, one last thing. Don't think of this as yes. I'll go ahead. <laughs> uh, don't think of this as a complete chore. Have fun. Seriously, have fun, and the you know you'll be able to see in the video that you are having fun, and that will make all the difference. You just do your research and see on YouTube, you know, good videos and bad videos. And the biggest rule of thumb is, if you're bored watching your own video, it sucks. So <laughs> make it so it as least is interesting to you, okay? If it's interesting to you, I'm sure it'll be interesting to other people. That's it. All right, guys, my students are coming in, so I will talk to you guys later. Bye. All right, further information will be posted on Facebook and email, so please don't miss out the upcoming webinars. Again, thank you for joining our webinar today, and I hope we'll see you again soon. 감사합니다.